Hello, my name is Omar Cruz. I'm Director of Education and Clinical Herbs for Himalaya Drug Company out of Bangalore and Houston, Texas. I studied drug design and then later Western herbalism, later to traditional Chinese medicine, Tibetan medicine, and finally Ayurveda. So we'll begin with talking about Garcinia. It's possibly one of the most famous plant medicines we have, and that's uh, fortunate and unfortunate, because as with anything in the media, it can sometimes be blown out of proportion. So Garcinia, to start with, and to be fair, is not a cure-all, uh, and nothing ever will be. There will never be one pill that could address the epidemic of obesity, as well as the challenges that come from the myriad of causes of obesity. So much like much like any tool, and we can look at herbal medicine or nutrients or vitaceuticals as a tool, every tool has a purpose and a specialty. So what is Garcinia's specialty? Garcinia's specialty happens to be within the rind of the fruit itself, which contains a powerful compound called hydroxycitric acid. Now, hydroxycitric acid has an antagonist role in our own biochemistry, in particular regards to blood sugar metabolism. So let me take a step back really quickly. The human body has over 100 trillion cells. Think about that, 100 trillion cells. That's more zeros than I care to count, actually. Out of those cells, we only have one million that can produce insulin. So for those of you who know, insulin, of course, is the hormone that drags sugar out of the blood and stores it safely within the lung muscles and the liver. Because sugar in availability was very scarce throughout human history, the body actually has very limited ways to producing insulin. That's why we have so few of these beta cells. Just in the event that we have excess sugar coming into the body, the liver has mechanisms by which it can convert excess sugar that's not being shuttled out of the body through insulin because of overconsumption perhaps, and convert it into fat. And that's where Garcinia seems to be having an antagonistic role. It's actually interfering with the body's ability to convert sugar into fat. That's good news because anyone who has difficulty like myself walking past the donut aisle or maybe even walking past a coffee store, the Garcinia extract can help us balance that sugar demand on the body and the sugar demand for insulin. That also explains why it may not work for everyone. So if you happen to be on a paleo diet or a high protein diet, say, and you're limiting the amount of carbohydrates you're taking in, you may not see as dramatic of a response as those people who are having a very carbohydrate rich diet, also known as the very typical diet, uh, who might have a better result with that type of a plant. Now the benefit with Garcinia is that it doesn't have any known side effects or contraindications with any medications that are currently made. So that's a positive thing to be said about its plant. But like any product with regards to weight and obesity, it works best when the diet comes along with it. Now from an Ayurvedic point of view, from an Indian science point of view, and this of course is a plant that comes out of India, they said that it strengthened the digestive system. And by strengthening the digestive system, you can actually correct, and that's the words they used, correct cravings. What they suggested was if the digestive system is very weakened, you will only crave very processed, heavily refined foods. But if the digestive system has more fire in it, literally, they called it agni, which is where the Greeks got the word igni, as in ignite. If the digestive system has enough of this fire, then we can now crave more complex foods. And that could also be where this mechanism of action lies.